The last M3 had a straight six engine. This has a four liter V8. But don't think for a minute it's become a big, lazy muscle car. Yes, it's a big V8, but it revs to 8,300 RPM. It's such a screamer. That said, it is softer than the old car and more forgiving, but it's also noticeably faster and cleverer. You can actually change the feel of the car and the performance on the iDrive control system. Meanwhile, the M differential gets busy at the back to keep the power going to exactly the right place at exactly the right time. Sometimes it'll even lock the rear wheels together so you can pull spectacular tail slides, even if your fists are made of ham. Jeremy then. Here I come. This is Mercedes's answer to the M3. It's the AMG C-Class and it's not a car. It's a complete animal. <laughs> oh, Christ. You don't really drive this car. You cling on for dear life. Sure, the new M3 has a top-notch conventional weapon under the bonnet, but this... this has a nuke. It's a 6.2-litre V8. Now, it's not the full-fat 6.2 they put in their bigger cars, but even this semi-skimmed version has 450 brake horsepower. So the oomph is as phenomenal as the noise it makes. <laughs> It's not only louder, more powerful, and more exciting than the M3, but it's simpler as well. It even has an automatic gearbox. I will admit, however, that there are one or two things I'm not sure about. It's not a very pretty car. I don't like the way Merck has copied BMW's iDrive system. Their old control center was better. It was easier to use. And then, rising above all this, is the problem with the traction control. When it's on, it's constantly interfering every time you go near the throttle. Eventually, of course, you become impatient and turn it off. But be advised, if you do that, you'd better be awake. Oh, so daisy. I've got it. There we are. Oh, dear, no. This is just an axe murderer with headlights. And I absolutely adore it. Both of those cars are ostentatious and ghastly. Which is why, if you want a small, fast German saloon, you'd have one of these. It's an Audi RS4. It may have been around for a couple of years now, but I have to say, it's still marvellous. It has a 4.2-litre V8, which produces the same power as Hammond's M3, but without drawing quite so much attention to itself. The exhaust note is like a tribute to Pavarotti. Listen to this. Sonorous. You see, it's not like that look-at-me racket coming out of the back of Jeremy's idiotic Mercedes. And in any case, why would you want a car that's trying to kill you? And unlike Hammond's BMW, it isn't smothered in gaudy tinsel. It's quiet, it's discreet. It's got absolutely nothing to prove. It's sort of at home with Andy McNabb. The ride is good, the four-wheel drive system keeps you out of the crash barriers, and you don't need an IT qualification to operate it. Right, what we're going to do now is find out how fast each car will go round the track. Yep, and for that we need our tame racing driver. 
Some say that as we speak, he is actually relaxing in the resort's pool. And he is. He is, actually. He is. We dragged him out of the pool and plonked him into his holiday hire car. This is Emerson Fittipaldi's F1 Lotus, which won the World Championship in 1972. And amazingly, it produces 420 brake horsepower, the same sort of power you get from our saloons. So, first up, let's see how fast this gets round the track. Correct, what, 1970? 1971 season began. What have you done to change it? Nothing. Didn't change it to 75. So every year they came Five back. years. It was really good last year, yeah. so look. Oh. Yeah, one of the interesting things about that car is it had torsion beam suspension, which was very forgiving in slow corners, which made the tyres last longer. Well, that, you that managed just... to find something boring about <laughs> something incredibly <laughs> exciting. But it is interesting. Do we have a time? 2.15.16. Yes! 2.15.16 oh, is, is, is the, the time. time it did. The Stig then switched to the Merc. I'm getting ready to run away. <laughs> Look at it Look at that! Oh, what a machine! Hard on the brakes now, Tony. Look at that, Dabby. He's missed the apex. Because well, it understeered off. It was going straight off. When do you feel most alive? When you're right on that close to death. Every time you get in that car, the greatest thing in your life is you can get out alive. Is yeah. That, that you're saying that. You get to every destination and go, yes! Yes, I'm alive, I made it. You don't think that might wear a bit? The Merc has more power than the Lotus F1 car, but could it beat its two-minute 15 lap time? Two forty-three. <laughs> <laughs> you thought... Next up, Captain Slow's Audi. I'm going to be 430 years old by the time it gets here. So it's going to take like half a year. Watch when it comes through here; it will look quick. You'll be able to see it. All right. Oh! So when you were saying that it won't slide, what you meant was, I can't slide it? Yes. Oh, I hate that sound of understeer. That... That Disappointing, is it? It's the sound of disappointment. Yeah. Could we have a time, please, now? Well, hang on. <laughs> that means your extra 45 horsepower mm -hmm. has half a brought second. you less than half a second. All that noise. Oh, oh, all that noise, it is the sound made by an idiot. So, with the Audi out of the running, it was the M3's turn. It is impossible for your car to be faster than my car. I've got more brake horsepower and more brake horsepower per tonne. It's out of control and it rolls through the corners, like the wheels are on sideways. Boring. Boring? Boring. Boring there. M3 drivers have no friends. It's just dreary. It's not dreary. It's it is. quietly aggressive, it looks menacing and purposeful, but not overstated. The M3 did a 2 minute 38.9. <clears throat> that is quite <laughs> funny. How can you argue with that?